Ahoy sailors, welcome aboard. Today we're looking at the Sakazuki deck, which is like the new big bad of uh, One Piece, basically. Like, or I mean, not of One Piece, but you know, the bad of the card game. Like, this guy's a beloved character, by the way, and I'm probably going to call him Akainu a lot during this video, but just ignore that. He's Sakazuki. Akainu is just like his title in the Navy. It means uh, Red Bulldog, and I don't know if they mentioned that in English, but whatever. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm doing this list because... Uh, I've been local three times, and I won once, and I went three one twice. Or is that right? Yeah, three one twice. So, so I'm like nine and two. So I'm not like perfect, but like I'm doing pretty good with it so far. But the first event I went to, um, I faced a lot of players that didn't have a lot of like full decks, or their decks weren't like you know like as up to par as it should be because it was like early OPO five, right? So that's the one I won. But whatever. Anyway, I've gotten close to winning a couple more times after that. And I just wanted to share his deck list because, well, he's like the deck to beat right now. So uh, I'll just get it out there. So anyway, leader is ability. He's just a regular uh, two color leader, four life and 5k power. And his ability is once per turn, you may trash one card from your hand to draw one card. Now that is huge. And you're going to see why it's huge when I show you more cards because like it's so important to put cards in your trash to the Navy. And you're basically using this almost every turn for the first few turns. Until you have, like, cards in your hand where you just don't really want to trash anything. But, like, even early in the game, if you don't want to trash a card, you, I, I advise you to almost always do it anyway. Because you need to fill that trash to get going. Like, that's just how the deck works. And then when you attack, you can give one of your opponent's characters minus one cost for the turn. Which is huge. Like, you know, just being able to give minus one cost on top of that upper ability. Massive, massive. And yeah, we're gonna get into the actual deck list now. So we got Tsuru at four. Tsuru is a one drop 2k counter. That's the whole reason to use her. But not only that, when you play her, she gives one of your opponent's cards minus two. Which is pretty huge. Like, I'm gonna explain my comboing a little later, but like, the comboing in this deck is, uh, it's just big brain, really. Like, you, you gotta know what you need and when you need it. And, uh, yeah, Manchuri is one of the cards that'll help you find your answers. But basically, with Manchuri, you play her, you pay one and rest her, and she'll search for uh, a card from your trash between three and five. But first, you have to return two cards from your trash to the bottom of your deck. And that's where Sakazuki's ability comes in handy, because he helps you get more cards in your trash. And there's more cards that require cards in your trash, just like Manchuri. But basically, once I get to like the three drops, everything from there to the five drops is searchable with Manchuri from your trash. And she's a 1k counter, which, uh, yeah, I mean, I end up using her for that quite a bit too. And we got Branu. This card's self explanatory. He searches the top three cards of your deck, and you can add one navy card to your hand. So, uh, yeah, and the two extra cards go to your trash, which makes them all the more better. Funny thing is, with this guy, you can fill your field up with him and, like, you can just, like, rush people down with him sometimes. Because your opponent will often ignore him, and uh, your board will be so big at that point that there's not a lot to do. But uh, that happens sometimes. Like, like it's more common against, like, uh, Purple Luffy. I mean, Purple Luffy's a really easy matchup. And then we got Bartolomeo here. Uh, this guy has a 2k counter, and he's a blocker for 3 cost. But, uh, like, more, more often than not, you're using him to counter, but it's always helpful to have a blocker, right? So, yeah. And then we got Tashigi, so it's pretty self-explanatory. She's just like Suru, only she's a 3 cost, and you have to rest her in order to do the minus 2 cost. And she's a 3 cost as well. So, like, she's actually, like, searchable with Manchuri. Just like uh, Bartolomeo. And then we got Hina here, which uh, on play, sh she gives one of your opponent's characters minus four cost for the turn. This is very strong. Like, just being able to give minus four on play is huge in itself. And yeah, that, that's basically it. She, she's got vanilla based baseline of three five, and she doesn't have a counter, but that's okay because she has vanilla stats and she gives minus four which is crazy but more often than not you're using her as a target for your leader ability to trash her and put her in your trash because you have more than one way to get her back other than manchuri which i'll show in a few cards 
And then we got one copy of Kobe. Kobe is just very useful. You can resurrect him, but like you trash one card from your hand to KO an opponent's character with a cost of three or less. And that's big. Like, like you're popping a big card with that because nothing hits anything above three in here other than uh, Borzolino, which we'll see later. The thing with Kobe is he can be rezzed and trash a card as well. And he has a counter, so you don't have to like play him in order to get him out of the way, you know? Like... Anyway, we'll, we'll get back to this later. Then we have Borzolino at 3. This guy is a staple in any Navy deck, and one reason why you only own 3 copies is because he doesn't actually synergize with the other cards, but like he's just such a good card you can't not run him. But like he's an indestructible blocker on your opponent's turn, like he can't be KO'd by effects, and he gets plus 1k power, so like he's a 6k blocker for 4 on your opponent's turn. And earlier in the game you may as well just swing with him because, I mean, he doesn't need to block, and he's 6k's already hard for your opponent to remove. Next we have Kuzon. Kuzon is in Borzolino. Like, people like to play around with their numbers, but, like, sometimes you'll run two of him and four Borzolino, or two Borzolino, three of Kuzon. Some people run four of each, but, like, Kuzon on play draws you one card. And if that's not good enough, he also gives one of your opponent's characters minus four cost for a turn, which is massive for this deck. And you always want to, like, try to keep Kuzon alive for that reason, because, you know, your opponent can play, like, a Big Mom or a Whitebeard or something, and, like, just giving minus four cost on one attack, huge. You don't gotta, like, go for damage on life. You just need to get that minus four off. And next we have Rebecca. This is the other card, like, Mantry. But she searches your trash for a card between three and seven cost. So everything I'm showing you after Bartolomeo until a few cards after here. And, uh... And then once you search for that card, you can play one with a cost of three or lower from your hand. Which is also, like, I mean, this card's just doing so much. She's also a blocker. And she has a counter of, two, of 1k. Now, the weakness of Rebecca is uh, she has zero power. Meaning she's, like, a prime target for, like, red cards. Like, Marco or, uh, what's that new card there? Uh, the new Robin. The red Robin one drop. She's a very easy target for them. But, like... She's getting value no matter what, because you're adding a card to your hand from your trash. And maybe you're adding another one if you play a brand new from your hand. Like, off, more often than not, though, you'll be searching Hina from your trash and playing her. So, yeah, that's uh, Rebecca. Next, we have Rob Lucci at four. This card makes the deck. Like, I mean, obviously he'd be nowhere without all the support around him, but, like, those three cards from the bottom of your deck... Or, I mean, from your trash to the bottom of your deck, sorry. And you KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of two or less, and one of them with a cost of one or less. Now, two and one is, like, really low, right? But, like, it's not a big deal with all the cost reduction you have in here. And, yeah, Rob Lucci. Oh, yeah, look at that nice art. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> and then we have Sabo at two. Now, Sabo, he is too good. He's a blocker, counter... When you play them, you draw two, you trash two, and none of your characters on your board can be KO'd by effects for that whole turn. Up until your next turn. So, so like, obviously this is perfect for the mirror. And, oh man, if I had this the other day, I would have won the whole tournament. I mean, if I had it, if I drew it the other day. <laughs> and then we have Borzel, you know, at three. Now, uh, Borzolino puts a card from your opponent's field with a cost of four or less to the bottom of the deck. And yeah, that's enough said, right? Like, that's a big cost. And now we have the events. So we have Ice Age at two. Ice Age is like just a minus five during this turn. Like, it's big. <laughs> Do I need to say more? Like, it's like Kuzon. Like, if you combo this with Kuzon, you can literally KO anything with Luchi's effect. Like, And that's just an example. Like, the possibilities are really endless on what you can do with this card. And we have Great Eruption at 4. Every card in here is so good. Like, I know I say, this card's good, this card's good, this card's good. But, like, I'm saying it because they are good. Like, we're just so good. But uh, Great Eruption draws you one card. And then you give one of your opponent's characters minus 2 cost for a turn. So, basically, it's like Tsuru. You're giving minus 2 cost. But you get to draw a card out of it, which makes it even better than her. Like, incredible, incredible. And, uh, yeah. 
Uh, and for uh, its trigger, uh, your opponent chooses one card from your hand and jashes it, which that's also pretty nice. Oh yeah, but, sorry, I, I missed this one's trigger, but like this one can KO one of your opponent's characters who have cost up three or less. But yeah, that'll come in handy sometimes. Wait, like, you know, get a blocker out of void or something. And then we have Hound Blaze. This card is so good. So, so good. But uh, for two cost, you have one of your uh, leaders or characters, 3,000 power, which is already, like, you know, not bad. But then you can put one of your opponent's characters with a cost of two or less on the bottom of their deck. And you have no clue how huge that is unless you've played this, like... Oh, it's so good. Like... You can just get rid of this guy, you know, the guy that's indestructible. I mean, I guess Borzolino does that too, but like, he doesn't give 3k power. Like, this is an incredible card, and a must-have in this deck. If you don't run this card, you don't know what you're doing right now. <laughs> but it also has a trigger, return up to one character for the cost of 3 or less to the owner's hand. That's okay, and yeah, you know, gets a blocker out of the way, helps you go for game. Always nice. And yeah, that's like the whole deck. Anyway, I'm gonna zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And here is the entire list. Now, I'd actually love to go over combos, but there's just like so much you can do. Like, I'd literally just be saying this card worked with this card, but like they really all work together because they're all lowering cost and they're all returning or KOing. Like, it's pretty self explanatory, and the combos are as big as your brain is. So, yeah, that's uh. Nearly it. I'm just going to go over a few cards that can... Uh, or I'm going to go over Rebecca. Just because Rebecca can search for anything from Bartolomeo here. All of this stuff. All the way to the end. And Manchuri can search anything from Bartolomeo all the way to Sabo. And yeah. Like... You, you, you see the possibilities here? Like, lots of comboing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so... Uh, I'll move on to the potential replacements. Sorry, my light's going down there. So, uh, first one I'm going to go over is Kaido. Kaido is actually very popular specifically for the mirror match. Basically, if your opponent has three or less life, you draw four cards. Like, four cards! That's like a game-ending card right here. And, like, your opponent can remove them. It doesn't really matter. Like, he drew you four cards. You're almost guaranteed to win if you play this guy in the mirror. And, uh, yeah, uh, if, I figure most people would probably replace Borzolino with him, or they'd replace Ahina, or m maybe Bartolomeo or Sabo. It's hard to say. I, personally, I'd keep this, the Bartolomeos, because having lots of 2Ks is really useful, but I know some people will disagree with that. And another card that a lot of people try is uh, this guy, Mihawk. Now, Mihawk, he's specifically good because... He can help you deal with like the really big stuff that you can't normally deal with. But like, if you use leader ability and great eruption, and then you play Mihawk, you can get rid of a big mob. Like, yeah, because he bottom he bottom decks a seven drop or lower. And yeah, leader ability plus great eruption is three. So no matter what the target is, Mihawk will always be able to bottom. And I don't know what I'd replace him with. Like, I figure personally for me, I'd probably remove one Borzolino. From a Kaido, specifically for the mirror. And I'd consider removing a Hina. Maybe Kobe. I wouldn't do Kobe specifically because he's a KO ability. And the deck kind of needs more removal anyway. So, yeah, I'd probably just remove one Hina. And toss in a Mihawk. Or I'd probably have to put in two Mihawks, honestly. I don't know what else I'd remove, but I'd leave that up to you. I guess I'd... I don't know. It's tough. Like, Sabo? Uh, oh, Ice Age. Yeah, I'd remove an Ice Age. Yeah, there you go. That'd be perfect. Anyway, yeah, that's that's what I'd probably make my list right there. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope my video helped, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye!